Hi there, if you're joining us, we're um, going to show you right now, really quickly, um, how to achieve this kind of look. Um, a, a lot of, um, when you first enter Symmetry, you get that kind of, you're in, a, you're in a flat planet space and you have a particular shading in regards to haze and this and that, but if, if you're looking for this kind of look where you have a really simple kind of colored background and this kind of like almost cartoony bright color look, um, or we'll show you how to do this. And I'm just going to just show you some of the variants here that we can quickly achieve here, just like simple colors and, and some of the other kind of um, some other kind of looks here. Um, so that's this. We can stick it in this kind of simple gradient here. Um, how about uh, we bring in a different kind of space here? We can also show like simple shoes here. Notice that there's not a lot of special shading. It's like the the underlying kind of model of the that the artist um, kind of shines through in this case and uh, we put a mirror down here. Um, but again, we're, we're getting that really simple kind of simple shaded world look that I think can be really nice to kind of play in and not have to deal with um, all that other kind of like standard exposure stuff. So uh, let's show you how to achieve this. I'm, I'm gonna do File New and I'll, we'll break it down. So when you uh, enter a new world, um, you're kind of put in this default uh, space, but you're also given this default viewport. And one of the things that you're that you're always given here is the exposure uh, layer and and what that basically does is it ensures that all the brightness values are kind of shifted in such a way to kind of be able to properly expose the image for your computer monitor or, or your VR device it kind of ensures that there's a good balance between the brights and the darks the dynamic range is, is kind of flattened into the, the range of your screen and it also kind of adds uh, bloom effect so if, if something is too bright uh, you can kind of set a threshold as, by the exposure layer essentially sets a threshold and makes anything that's too bright kind of bleed over to its nearby pixels and you can see that if we make something super bright here you'll see that it kind of has that glow effect that's all handled in the exposure layer notice what happens when it's super bright it's overexposing the rest um, the, 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 the scene is being exposed such that everything else kind of is turning dark to be able to properly expose this really bright object anyways long story short it's this exposure layer that makes it very hard to achieve a specific white in the space because, or a specific color in the space, because no matter what, it will reshift all the colors to kind of properly expose, meaning that you can't really control the background color very explicitly because it will get darkened or lightened accordingly. So to achieve this look, what we really want to do is, first of all, uh, we'll operate in a different type of space. Uh, we could do it in this space, but I think it'll just be easier if we operate in a new open space. So I'm just going to right click over here in the browser and create a new open space and then double click on it to kind of be put into this space. And so the first thing we are going to want to do is turn off this exposure layer. So now our scene is not being exposed. Those values are as they are, as they've been created, as they are rendered in the space. They will be unaffected by the exposure. So it means it's up to us to make sure that the exposure is correct. So now that I've turned off the exposure layer, um, uh, let's import an object in here so we can kind of see what our initial space looks like. I'm going to import these shoes here. So you can already see that now with the exposure layer, let's see what happens, it all kind of becomes dark gray because the, the scene is very dark and, and there's a certain amount of lighting and it's kind of trying to balance out that um, with the darkness. But if we turn it off, you can see that now it has its original colors shining through. And now we can go and set the background color by clicking on the haze of the background space, setting this to whatever we want. And the other really important thing to be aware of is the lighting. So this is still being lit. And so we, depending on what we're trying to achieve, let's, let's create like a, a ground for it. So it's, it's now properly kind of on the shadow of the ground here. And we can give this whatever color we want and it will have that exact same color. It's because we're handling our own exposure now, we want to be really mindful of light sources. So for instance, if we were to create a, a point light source here and stick it near the shoe, notice how it all, if we get it really close to the shoe or if we make this light really bright, it's kind of really blowing out the whites here. And so this is where the exposure layer normally would take care of that for us, but then it gives us that kind of realistic shaded world look, which we're trying to avoid in this case. So basically we just need to make sure we manage the lights really carefully ourselves. So in this case it might be like making sure this light source is really far away or it's not as bright. Um, so that becomes really important. Another important uh, thing that could be very useful is turning off making sure uh, the uh, particular material is unlit. So if we go into the um, shoes material, for instance, you'll see that it's currently being lit. We can turn that off and even get closer still to the original kind of artistic look of this object. So when it's lit, it's obviously still receiving you know, light 
from the from the directional light of the space and the point light source. So making it unlit makes it even easier to kind of achieve that look as originally was intended in the original model. But um, in this case, we do like the lighting, and so we'll keep it. Um, and we'll manage it kind of carefully ourselves by ensuring that we don't get too close to the object and keep it far enough away. So that's about it. Um, once we're kind of in this without exposure, we really have careful control over all the lighting characteristics and we can really achieve lots of nice looks. Um, I can import this floating base, for instance. So on this object, for instance, we import from Google Blocks. You'll see that there's a, it actually looks way too white, bright white right now. So there's a couple of little modifications we have to make to the material in this case. So on this object's material, I have to remember to turn off the diffuse color and set this to black. And so now we're back. So it was adding these two colors together. It has vertex colors, and the material color was defaulted to white. In this case, we had to make sure we set that to black. And there we are. We've now made it look kind of given it its its, its own little, it looks nice now in this space. And then again, if we turn off the illumination on it, then it gets even flatter and becomes even more cartoony in this case. But we like that uh, illumination. And we can play around with specularity, for instance. We can really uh, crank that up, and if we make the glossiness really low, we start getting really interesting effects here. Almost cartoony effects. Now the other thing that you might want to be aware of is that you, the other thing the exposure layer also takes care of for us is it adds that those bloom effects. And so if we want to make our own bloom effects here, we, we can't do it through the exposure layer, but we can do it with image processing layers. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. I'm going to create a new, hit the plus button here on our, on our viewport, and I'm going to create a new image filter, a brightness filter. So I'm going to create that. So notice when you create a brightness filter, it gets very dark. But if we look at the parameters of the brightness filter and we reduce this threshold, we can choose which parts we want to bloom out, you know, to make it glow out. By basically, whatever we see here is going to then bloom. And so the, the darker we make this, um, less will bloom out. So I've set the brightness filter now to about 5.6, so that only the N and certain parts of the shoe will now bloom out. And then on top of the bright pass filter, I'm going to create um, Gaussian Blur Horizontal. This will blur that filter, the, the filtered part of the, of the lighting. I'm going to add more uh, Gaussian Blurs. And then lastly, what we need to do is on the image filter group itself, I'm going to go and set the blend mode to additive. And so that's added on top. And then I'm going to set the downsampling to maybe downsampling 4x, which kind of increases the amount of uh, the size of the filter, basically. Um, so it, it, it's a larger effect. It's hard to see here. I'm going to make the background black in this case, and we'll be able to see it better. And it's still very, very subtle. So let's uh, crank up on the filter, the bright pass filter. I'm going to increase the amount of stuff. And now you can start to see that glow coming through. So that's how you can now achieve bloom effects, even though you're not you're manually exposing it. Basically, you're choosing which parts to bloom out. So I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, one one of the other things we could do is let's say we're in Photoshop, we create a gradient like this, and we want to use this as a background. I just save this as a texture, let's say, and then I'm going to create a sphere here that represents our texture. And I'm going to on the sphere, I'm going to remove its rigid body, remove its trigger activating. I'm going to add a mesh modifier to it. I'm going to flip its normals, so it's kind of inward. All the normals are now, we can go inside the sphere. And now it's all around us. And then I'm going to import that texture that we had, uh, that, that gradient texture from Photoshop that I created. And then I'm going to assign it to this thing's material, um, to its diffuse map, like such. And now we have a really simple um, background. And one other thing we'll do is we'll make this unlit. So sky maps, things that we want to use as background, we want to always make sure we unlight them unlit them so that they're not lit at all. And I'm going to set this thing to, a, to the center of the world, zeroing out all of its XYZ, and then I'm going to set it to have a huge radius. And there we are. We're now in this kind of simple gradient space with some bloom on this. Turn off the bloom, and we're back to kind of a simple shaded space here, which looks really nice.